the host of Aaron's Hour, Aaron Phillips. <laughs> Phillips, why'd you cut off George's intro for? He's gonna he's gonna yell at you. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to another edition of Aaron's Hour, coming to you live from the WWDB TV series in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right. We are here again. And by the way, this is the last show of Aaron's Hour. Well, for 2023, at least. Uh, Sorry, John. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, we're going to take the next couple of weeks off to enjoy the holidays. Uh, although maybe after talking with my guests today, I may change my mind on that. Uh, but since I celebrate Hanukkah, it'll still be a learning experience for me. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Sitting in my right, we saw him at the Halloween time and the lady sitting next to me simply known as the Weird Sisters. How are you ladies doing? Good. Doing great. How are you? Good. I'm doing well, thank you. We'll get to them in a second. First, let me thank everybody for watching on Facebook or on YouTube. If you are going to go to YouTube, remember, you must click the little live button there across the top. Even if you go back and watch it again, that live button must be hit. If you're driving around somewhere, hey, listen, don't watch and drive. Download the WWDB TV uh, app to your phone, your Android. WWDBTV LV to your iPhone product and in about three days, 72 hours. If you are uh, hooked up to Roku, and if you're not, you need to because it's the only way you're going to see the shows from WWDBTV there. Download it, get it set up. You'll see all of my shows, Aaron's Hour, plus the many choices and options like a Chinese menu. You may have to pull together whatever show you want to watch because there's a lot of them on there. And of course, during the show, I'd love for you to call in 702 992 3207 because today, we're going to talk about origin stories of how Christmas was started or the Yule, as I got corrected before the show got started. Um, and anything else we're going to talk about, I would love to know just for the heck of conversation, drop in what your favorite tradition is as a family or whatever you like to do around the holidays and let's share it. <laughs> I just noticed she bent, is her hat like disappearing in the shot? When she turns a certain way. Because yeah. of the green on the top, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. I'm like, you, you look down for I'm like, where did her head go? Oh my God. Yeah. It does. There it goes. <laughs> We may, uh, yeah, yeah. It's magic. Wait, I got some spray paint. That's right. Yeah, really. <laughs> anyway, so that's magic. what we got going on today. <laughs> Today's all about discussing the uh, holidays and origins. Should be a fun show. It was fun with these ladies last time. Also, you guys have a show coming up in, uh, in January that we'll yes. talk about again, right? Mm -hmm. So they've got something going on. Um, but first and foremost, as always, I'd be remiss if I didn't do it. Not only that, but it would be a shame if I didn't do it. It's time now for Vegas Unwrap 2.0. With a nod to the past and an eye to the future, here is Aaron Phillips with Vegas Unwrapped 2.0. All right, here we go. First of all, listen, unfortunately, my news feeds have changed on my phone. MSN has changed something up, but I don't know if there's any winners in terms of jackpots out there. I'm sure there were. A yes, John, did you win something? Yes, I did. What did you win? I didn't play. The case of Dallas doesn't work. I didn't play, so I got to keep all my money. That's always a win. There you go. You betcha. Uh, so now if you didn't play, what'd you do with that money? What'd you spend it on? I paid my cable bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, because I wouldn't want this show to go off the rails. Might as well finish it, right? All right. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Listen, man, did you, I saw an estimate. 400,000 people is what they're expecting in town for the holidays. Now, we know for the holidays, we always get a ton of people. I didn't think it was ever, I always used to tell people it's like maybe 250, maybe, but 400,000 sounds like an awful lot of people no, for the holidays. I, I think that's more accurate. 400? Yeah. Wow. Well, they're going to be in between the Strip and Fremont Street and just stay out of the local casinos. We don't need that up there. We like our little quietness. Anyway, 400,000 people are coming in. There's going to be events all over the place. Um, I'll talk about New Year's in a little bit. Uh, but first, let's focus on maybe some. This might this might be a great segue to get these ladies involved in this conversation. So I'm going to talk about some of the Christmas events that are that are in town. Uh, I know we'll talk about the origin probably after break. We'll get into that so we have a little more time to, to, to share with it. Um, so, so here's some of the holiday attractions if you want to look for things to do when you come in. Um, the Bellagio Resorts always has a great display. Do you guys ever go in and see their the flowers and stuff? I, I haven't been there in the past few years. Okay, I know about it. But they do, they do some and the great Venetian stuff. too. Right, the Venetian always has a great show. So you have the Bellagio, a holiday display which is including a thirty foot Nutcracker. I'll just let, I'll just let that line float for a second or two, and a Coca Cola train. 
you also have the glittering lights drive through display uh, up at the Las Vegas Speedway. That's 15 north. What, 10 minutes north of where we are, roughly? Yeah. yeah. yeah going up it's there. It's $39. Is that what it is? It's Perfect. $39. $39, and that's a car load. Yes, that's so you, a car load. And if you're military, they give you a discount. Oh, good. Okay, um, so John, you can go and pay less. Pilot my car. That's what it was. And, and if you, um, I think if you bring a donation, you get it. Yeah, discount. they always have a donation yeah. stuff. Going. It may be cold, but the last time we did it, I borrowed my friend's convertible and we did it topless. <laughs> you saw everything. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it was too cold. It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was too cold. <laughs> John, <laughs> I'm not saying it. I, it was so, too first, I saw a uh, 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 dressing going on before the show, and now I got <laughs> tops down and <laughs> everything was exposed. But uh, no, but but it did remind me talking about. It, I didn't realize this for a car load, like in, back in the day when we had drive-ins. I mean, we have mm -hmm. one still here in town, right? Yes. Yeah. But people were cramming to trunks and right everything, just yeah. try to get as many people as you can for the nickel, right? That it would that it would I take. Remember. Right? I was never locked in a trunk, fortunately. At least not that I will admit to. Anyway, uh, Enchant Christmas at Las Vegas Ballpark. The ballpark, which is up in uh, Summerlin, right off the 215, turns into a winter wonderland with activities with ice skating, a holiday maze, dazzling lights, vendors, the whole shebang. So that's going on up there. Here's a tradition. Tell them the Ethel M chocolates, right? The Cactus yes, Walk. Yes, Cactus is all Gardens. Up. That's great. Yeah. Uh, they don't give out free chocolate samples anymore. No, yeah, they, not the, since COVID. Not since COVID. That's, yeah. Since COVID. But if you haven't been down there, uh, Sunset and Sunset is the intersection, right? Sunset yeah, sun, and Sunset. Sun, actually, it's sun, Sunset and Mountain Vista. Is, Mountain Vista is the actual it's drive. the actual into, drive, right? yes. Um, so check that out. That's a lot of fun. But also, if you're going to go at night, which is obviously the best time to enjoy the lights, check the weather. Uh, dress warmly. Be safe. Because right now with flus and COVID stuff, maybe acting out around... You know, we just want to make sure everybody's prepared. Don't think you can go out there in short sleeves when it's like 40 degrees at night. You will get sick. At least that would happen to me. Anyway, uh, so here's some uh, family-friendly uh, shows. You have the Popovich Comedy Pet Theater. Okay, if you like pet magic. Piff the Mub Magic Dragon. I think that's all at the Tropicana, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mr. Piffles uh, is the world's only magic-performing chihuahua. Have you ever seen a chihuahua do magic? I haven't. Well, I, I've I've seen it make uh, food disappear. But, uh. <laughs> and then change its form into a whole other thing. Anyway. Uh, Jabberwockies, of course, Blue Man Group. That's a great show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, you know, I was a castaway because they didn't select me. Anyway, uh, Illuminate, that's another great show. It's a dance performance that combines technology and dance. Um, and then America's Got Talent Live. You know, every year the winners and some of the folks from previous shows, they get together and do a national touring show. So that should be uh, a good show as well. Now, a lot of these, just look them up online. I have more to more to talk about as far as restaurants and things, but I want to stop there a little bit because I'm going to change the direction of what I said I was going to do because it's my show and I can do it this way. Um, let's talk a little bit about the origins. We talk about Christmas and you, you man, mentioned before I went on the air, it's really the Yule. So let's talk about the origins of the holiday. Uh, and we'll get into that a little the bit. Traditions. before. Yeah, let's talk about that. So where would you guys like to start? Well, first of all, Christmas is based on a Christian belief. Okay. And that's only 2,023 years old. Oh, just newly okay. started. Yeah. <laughs> it's young. It's Yule, young. Yule which originally, originally Yule is spelled J-U-L or J-O-L. Ooh, okay. It's Anglo-Saxon or Nordic beliefs. Okay. Okay. Yesterday was at, actually the festival of Lucia. Okay, which Lucia sounds like lights. The opera singer. That is, Shut up. It is actually, <laughs> you are actually correct. It's, okay. She was turned by, by the Christians into a saint. Okay. But she is the goddess of light, and it is still celebrated in many of uh, the um, northern countries so you mentioned the lights so you yes. know that hanukkah just ended right which is what i celebrate the mm -hmm. festival of lights, of lights. within yes. story any particular correlations it seems coincidental that we have two two traditions and holidays that evolve around lights well personally i believe that in almost every country the holidays the traditions are very similar because we have like a universal beliefs okay and some people don't want to believe that. Some people don't, that you know, either racist or, you know, narcissistic, mm -hmm. that theirs is the only relief. But 
if you look at a lot of the traditions, they are based on bringing back the light. Mm -hmm. Yule, which is now spelled Y-U-L-E, is the tradition of bringing back the light. Okay. And when you say bringing back the light, you're it's, talking about okay. lives like the Messiah as a lot of people No, believe. it's actually bringing the light back to the world. Bringing, because you have to realize when these traditions were created, there were no grocery stores. There were no, we had no electric lights. Walgreens weren't on every yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's in the middle of winter. It gets dark at three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You're constantly building fires to keep warm. And you're talking about peasantry. Mm -hmm. They realized that they had to appease the gods to bring back the warmth to the earth so the mm -hmm. earth can regenerate. Okay. <clears throat> Mix in their traditions or beliefs according to different religions. Mm -hmm. There's the Lord of the light, Lord of the hunt, or a father of the light. Mm -hmm. Originally, he was tall and thin, wore fur furs, wore pine boughs, okay. wore holly, okay? And he would bring sacks of wood and food okay. to the peasants who were far apart from one another to help them. Gotcha. That's what they believed. Okay. They would build huge fires to bring him to them, to guide his way. Mm -hmm. And so he can bring back the light. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Enter Christianity. Mm -hmm. If you're a pagan, you were burned, you were hung, right. stoned, whatever. Um, so they started hiding their traditions in the Christian traditions. Okay. Hence, Father Christmas was born. Okay. Okay. Originally, he was tall, thin, wore green robes, and mm -hmm. he mixed with um, Good King Wenceslas um, and um, St. Nicholas. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you've got, you're getting your, your St. Nicholas now. Right. Okay. There were several men who fit that genre who actually lived. There was a St. Nicholas. There was a St. Bartholomew and he was black. And he would go from town to town bringing food and medicine. All of the saints mixed together, they turned them into Father Christmas. Okay. Father Christmas was tall and thin, wore pine boughs, wore green, did not wear red until later on when you're talking the 1800s. Mm -hmm. and Why the change in color to the red? That actually had a lot to do with the Christian influence at that time okay. because red was the, the color of a um, cardinal. Ah, okay. That makes okay? sense. Mm -hmm. And since he was supposed to be a saint, he would have to be a cardinal gotcha. in order to become a saint. Then at what point did the red and green come together as the traditional Because he was colors? still wearing pine boughs. Okay. He was still, he was still dressed in holiday traditions. Okay. We decorate our home in those. Mm -hmm. Actually, they decorated the homes in those because a, it would keep the warmth in, but also the smell. The, the pine smell. The pine smell actually kept the house clean. And pine actually does cleanse the air of bacteria. Okay. So, so is that where, and I, this is going to sound really stupid, and, and I'm not trying to make a joke of this. Pine saw cleaner. Yes. Is that where that potentially well, pine, comes from? Pine I mean, right. is a cleaner. Right. That, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> hey, actually, if, you rub, if you rub pine on you when you're walking through the woods, the mosquitoes won't bother you. Really? Yeah. I wish I'd known that during the summer when these darn little mosquitoes right? couldn't so see would get you. These are things that... Wow. Okay. And, of course, because of time and traditions, right. they change, they change, they change. And people pass things on word of mouth. So that's where folklore sort of kicks right. in right. at that point, right? And like I said, last night was um, celebrated. It was all over the internet. They pick the most virtuous girl um, in their in their town, and she basically she's nominated. She's it's sort of like a pageant in many ways, but she has to be virtuous and kind and good and and honest and all these all the all the good things okay. in life they put a crown of candles on her head mm -hmm. 
She is dressed all in white. This comes from the Druids. And they is everybody keeping track of the scorecard here? Right? <laughs> Everybody's coming in so here. So she would actually she goes in front of a parade of other virtuous young girls, mm -hmm. also dressed in white, also wearing pine boughs, etc. And they they hold candles and go through the town. They are helping the light come back to the earth. Okay. They're bringing back the warmth. Gotcha. Because the days will soon be getting longer. Long that's right. bringing the light back. Gotcha. Well, see, okay. that makes sense. So. And then um, we can go into Krampus. That's a whole nother I know, we'll That's get, a whole we'll, other show. <laughs> we'll, uh, Jennifer, why are you putting in there St. Lucia? Yes, that's why I honeymooned. That's yes. why I'm asking. Lucia, Lucia is another another version. It's the same thing. Okay. Because that's where I went, that's where right. I went on my honeymoon, St. Lucia. Yeah. So. Saint, the, Saint Lucia, St. Lucia. Okay. Um, they, she has like five different names, but again, it depends on your providence, sure. your country. Sure. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a report. You can look at any report and decipher out of it what you want. So, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to step aside for our first break because I do have to pay some bills before I go on break for the next two weeks. So I have the weird sisters. They're not very weird. They're just very knowledgeable is really what it is. I'm Aaron Phillips. A lot more to come. Plus, we're going to talk about the, an event they have coming up in 2024 in January. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Speaks to your heart and Desert Valley Gallery. I've got to have it. So colorful. I can't live without it. You'll find the art that speaks to your heart and Desert Valley Gallery. Most business owners struggle with the following issue. How do I brand my business to get noticed? Double Eight Design Studio helps businesses by designing brands that boost confidence, look and feel timeless, stand out from the competition and attract all the right clients. Whether you are in need of a new brand, upgraded design elements, or completely redesign your current brand, Double Eight Design Studio has fully customized packages for your business. Call Chelsea McKendrick at 702-525-3334 and visit www.88designstudio.com. Let Double Eight Design Studio give you a brand new outlook for your business. Bingo. All right, welcome back to Aaron's Hour. Hey, Desert Valley Gallery, my friends up there, Richard, Ed, and uh, Monique, and everybody else up there. If you go in there between now and the end of the month, that's right, right in the middle of holiday season for your gifts, but you don't need to just go in there for the holiday season. You got birthdays, Valentine's Day, or just because maybe you're moving to a new house and you want a new painting to go up on your roof on your wall. Go in there, mention Aaron's Hour, Aaron Phillips, WWDB TV, or any of the shows that I am involved with for your first visit, your first purchase of $150, man. That's it. It's not hard, especially up there. You'll get an opportunity to be entered into a drawing for a pair of tickets to go to their monthly cabaret show. Any month you want in 2024, it's an $80 value to go up there. They feed you a little food. You get some great entertainment. Again, Desert Valley Gallery, $150 purchase or more. You get entered into the sweepstakes by mentioning Aaron Phillips, Aaron Zauer, or WWDB-TV. See, I remembered this time, John, without you. Hey, and that's good. And, and the thing is that even, I, I mean, yes. the the the... The show Use your words. is worth it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> because is. you get the artwork that you're going to purchase. Right. And, it, I mean, even and then you get $80 back by getting into the sweepstakes yeah. if you win the tickets. Uh, it's a win-win. Awesome. Love it. Go up there and mention us. And uh, you'll get. Don't mention my name. Yeah, they'll double the I price. Get black balls on the place. They'll double the price and then give you a 50% discount if you mention John's name. Uh, anyway, thank you for tuning back in. We are here today with Mama Voodoo and Lady T.A. We're sisters. We're talking about the traditions and origins of the holidays at this time. So my my next question to kind of hopefully continue what you guys were talking about. We were talking about Krampus. And I know today for a lot of folks, because of some shows that have been out there with especially Seinfeld, right? Yeah. Krampus sort of became a, a laughing matter at a point. We'll get to that in a bit. So with all the traditions and origins that you just shared, um, 
Christmas traditionally has also been celebrating Jesus Christ's birthday, as at least as I understand it, right? The Nativity scenes and all of that. Where'd that come into all of this as far as the celebration of Christmas on December 25th? All right. I'm about to get controversial. Hey, listen. That, <laughs> uh, you can be controversial. I'm just okay. going to sit back here and listen. Um, no, I'm only kidding. Originally, if you read all of the doctrines, if you go back and look at all of the actual evidence, he was born in January. Okay. But January was actually not just the beginning of the year. It was also beginning of festivals and things like that. Okay. <clears throat> it was the Council of Mycenae. Which is what? Which is the high council of one. Well, at one time it was the high council of all of the Christian um, denominations. Okay. The the, oh, and all the cardinals and all of that. Okay. They all got together. They were the ones who decided what came out of the Bible, what went into the Bible. Um, they, they were the editors. They were the editors, yes. And they were dis they decided to make the date for his birthday to be December 25th because they were trying to bring pagans into the fold. Okay. And Yule is always celebrated between the 22nd and the 25th. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So depending on where you were, mm -hmm. it was in that time frame. So they made it the okay. 25th. They decided to make it the 25th. Gotcha. What and, was his real date in January? Do we know? Um, Just out of curiosity. No, actually, I, I don't know. It, they say he was born some because they did, um, they used uh, stars. They used to, right. the, uh, astrological mm -hmm. and so on because they, and they figured it out that it was sometime in mid-January okay. that he was actually born. Gotcha. Um, now I'm not saying we don't say that he doesn't ha he never existed. Right, right. We may not follow his path, mm -hmm. but if you look, our path is no different. Mm -hmm. We have many similar beliefs, but they've also stolen <laughs> many of our ideas. Mm -hmm. The Christmas tree, <laughs> right? The Tannenbaum is our tradition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Incense is our tradition. Mm -hmm. Candles, well, our tradition. You, for clarification, <laughs> for those who missed your visit with me last time and mm -hmm. are nothing with you, when you say our traditions, please describe what you mean by that. We're pagans. There you go. We are pagans. We don't believe in one, just one God. Um, Nor is God a single parent. Yes. Right, okay. Exactly. And we believe in a balance. We believe in the earth as our mother. Um, harm none. Mm -hmm. We have certain beliefs, doctrines that we follow, mm -hmm. and um, it, we believe in the law of threes, which is if you do harm, it comes back to you three times fold. So mm -hmm. why would I hurt you mm -hmm. when I know I'm going to get slammed? Right. So, so is that the same philosophy when people say things happen in threes? Yes. Same thing. Like yes. You hear a death of somebody in the news and then another yeah. one. And yeah. that, so is that the, law, the law of threes. Okay. okay. And the law of three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Me yeah. and Mother Crone. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So, and, and gotcha. if you, it's like she said, God is not a single parent. Right. When people talk about the goddess, they'll talk about May, Mother, and Crone. But her counterpart is the young Lord, the high Lord, and then the elder. Okay. Okay. Odin, Thor, Loki, mm -hmm. you know. Osiris, Isis, Horus. If you're looking at the threes, it's a, it's always a three. Mm -hmm. And the like I said, people take from other cultures. Right. They glean what they want, but and combined what they and want. combined sure. what they want. If sure. you like, I I spoke last time about voodoo. Same thing. Right. They had to hide their ancestral beliefs. Mm -hmm. The slaves had to hide it, and they hid it in a way where it was ex acceptable to their Christian owners. So I, I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent to what you just mentioned about having to hide their beliefs so that, that well, the outside the world, Jews, the Jews, that's, are the <laughs> you're exactly going right yeah. where to, especially during the Holocaust time, yes. even today, even yes. today. You know, right now with the, the little with crazy going, going on. on. I, I got to share this with you. Last night, my wife, and I, my wife and I went out to a dinner that was put on by a parent of a student from her school. Does it every year. He's a, he's a realtor, very successful, brings fan, all this. Together. Anyway, so we're getting dressed, and I used to wear a Jewish Star David all the time. 
years ago, I just stopped mm -hmm. wearing it. Mostly because during the day when I'm with kids, you know, I don't need to keep yanking on it. But then with all that's going on, even when I go to the temple for the high holidays, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I really want to wear this, you know, all that. Last night was the first time for whatever the reason we went out. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to put on like the Hamsa. I have the Hamsa hand. Yeah. Because um, my silver star David was tarnished and needed to be cleaned. But anyway. And but I think about that now. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I'm afraid. You know, I mean, I, I, I should yeah. my you know, my head's like on a swivel. You know, who's around? So kind of the same thing because same we don't thing. let the world And it's know, a right? shame that, okay, we're in 2023, mm -hmm. almost 2024. Mm -hmm. We have to hide ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's like more so now. Yeah. yeah. We, we then, you know, 150 years ago. Yeah, exactly. We were, um, I forget where we were. We were in costume mm -hmm. and we were, we stopped off and we were on our way to do something. I forget. Are you what? talking about the young man in the casino? No, no, okay. that was something different. Um, but this woman walked by and, and said to me, you're going to hell. So my response to that is I can't, there's still a restraining order. <laughs> and it. and the, it. it usually stops them in their tracks because they just don't know how to respond to it. I said, who would think the devil would be that thin skinned <laughs> and walk away. And you know, you have to make a joke out of it because if you don't laugh about it, it's really sad that somebody thinks they have the right sure. to stop and judge you and turn to you and, and say right. that, you know, your belief is your belief. I, you know, bless you. I, More power to you. I want to, <laughs> I want to acknowledge somebody. Hey, uh, hi, Jamie. Hi, AJ. I want to, I want to acknowledge Jamie Lee. She is a daughter of my, my dear friend, uh, uh, Ricky Cash, who passed away a couple of years ago. He was my first partner. Radio. John knows him. We all work together. Um, I tagged Jamie in this show and I tagged her in my promo as well, but she also is wicked. Ah. And so I've tagged her in this because I want Blessed her to be. tune in. Blessed be. Blessed so, be. Yeah. So Jamie, if you want to call in, I'd love to get your take on this. 702-992-3207. We're talking about the origins of the holidays and the beliefs and how everything sort of came about. Um, so Jamie, if you can, if you choose to, 702-992-3207. But I am glad that you're that you logged in. And hey, uh, and again, hi, AJ. AJ is a great interview. You guys should be on her show. Um, again, AJ, thank you. Um, but give us the invite. I, I've heard, oh, wait, Jamie, wait, what does she say? I'm thinking of the time this teenage idiot thought my cousin's pentagram as a star of David. I've had that too. And started yeah. saying anti Semitic yeah. stuff. Do you know AJ Dean? Because she just put in there, love the sisters. She's uh, a, I think she's on my, I think she's on our Facebook. Okay, she's great. She's, I believe she's on AJ. Yes. Yes. You're on, you're on my, on my Facebook, oh. I think. Uh, Jamie says, I'd love to call, but got the small human in background. Uh, <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> Jamie, do you think we've not had worse on the show? You know me pretty well. You know what I'm saying? But if you can, great. If you can, great. If not, I'd love to hear your thoughts as we're having the conversation here about, about origins. She made me a believer and I'll share this story and then we'll go back on. Um, I have a lot of fun with her. I really do. And she knows I love her when I do this with her. She has told me one time that her life is made up of 80 plus other souls. So I used to joke with her about, so, you know, how do the 80 other people feel about such and such? So one Thanksgiving, they, we all had dinner at my house and she all of a sudden gets up out of the living room. And she goes to the front door. No, no doorbell. No, no. She just goes to the front door, opens it. A couple of minutes, she comes walking back in and she then diverts herself into my kitchen where I had a picture hanging on my refrigerator. She pulls the picture off the refrigerator and she comes to me and she says, Who's the lady at the front before she shows me the picture? Who's who's the lady in your family that wore these like big glasses? First thing, I, my mom was already gone by that point. My mom was used to those big fashion sunglasses, you know, with the big yeah. frames, right? Yeah. She goes, no. And she holds up the picture, says, who's this person? Who's my great grandmother? And I said, why? She says, because that was who at the door. And then we sit down after dinner and she's she's bringing in my wife's grandmother into the conversation. I wanted to hear from my mother, but no, she brings in my wife's grandmother. Um, so... I'm a believer in in afterlife. I really mm -hmm. am. Um, but for her to do that. Everything has energy and that's what it's based on. Absolutely. And that's why I became, I tell you more stories, which continues to increase my belief. But when she did that and 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 she, oh, 80 plus reincarnations and I'm a medium. Yeah. She calls me every once in a while. Like when I'm you, a large. 
Oh, yes, I, <laughs> I'm, a one X. I'm a double. I got you. We got that was very good. Um, what is I was I was we're dramatic. both empaths, and yeah. okay, so we feel more. And yeah, I know I, 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 well, I got a full house, I got a lot of shadows. She has an house. entourage that comes with her. See, I was told I actually have the gift to do that, but I never harnessed it. But I feel my mom all we the time. We can open your eye. We can open your eye. I, you know what? I, I would be very intrigued in learning more about that. I really wouldn't. I say that seriously. I, my mom, my wife, and I would be sitting around. When was the last house. time you talked to your mom? In person? No, just when was the last time you whenever talked to your mom? Whenever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> whenever. That's how we call our mom. That's how we call our mom. We need when, a seance. Well, listen, <laughs> whenever I smell smoke in my house, cigarette smoke, because my mom used to smoke. All right. And then you just have a conversation with your mom. I yeah. turn to my wife and say, hey, I. My your, mom's your here. Mom. Yeah. And good I, for I, you. Hey, mom. How you doing? Everything is well. Hope all is good. Thanks for stopping by. And within seconds, it's gone. Yeah. So I know it's there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Know, I know it's there. Um, she tells me stuff about my, my partner that I told you about, her father, Ricky Cash. Um, messages that she would send. He told her yeah, to, to, deliver, to deliver his eulogy when we had a memorial service for him. Mm -hmm. And the stuff I hear from her from him. Uh, so, yes. There's I, no way she could know that. And yeah. she knows me very well. Well, I did your, I did your reading. Uh, yeah, you did. You scared the crap out of me last time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told I'm spooky, but I own it. So. No, they hate. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I, but I like hearing that. I'm not afraid to learn of what may be down the road. I don't, you know, I don't want to know the day I die, you know, what's written on the calendar. You know what? It, we have, we don't have one path. Right. We choose as we go through our path. There is a destination we're supposed to reach. Right. If you don't reach it in this life, you have to come back around. It's unfortunate that you do have to learn those lessons all over sure, again. Sure. And people don't realize the decisions you make every day don't just affect the you, they affect the people around you too, because that makes them change their path. Right. So, you know, so Jamie's mom is also an empath and she has the gift. Now, I don't know if she's it's as strong as Jamie's, but Jamie's mom, my my friend's ex number one, I think, <laughs> um, has the gift as well. Uh, but I, I would, I would ver be very interested from a personal note to walk down those other eye-opening paths. Just if for no other reason, to talk to my to mom. To get the message a lot clearer. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I digress away from the holidays. I can because it's my show and I choose to do it. That's right. Anyway. All right. Let's get back uh, uh, on topic here. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on. So the stuff that goes on to celebrate Christmas here in town. Do you guys ever kind of go, really? Do they really celebrate that? Or you know. Is that really happening? You, is there anything that goes on you kind of raise your eyebrows at and say, really? Uh, do this? The eyebrows. <laughs> Did I say I, something I should yeah, have? Yeah, it's an inside joke. Oh, that, okay. that and tuna will get me going like crazy. Like, okay. <laughs> we'll have to tell you that um, off, off camera. <laughs> That's another show, ladies and gentlemen. Be back when Aaron Phillips is after dark. <laughs> and, like, and like my sister said, yeah. we don't judge what you believe in of or course. how you celebrate it. Right. Or should anybody, everybody anybody. like and we were talking earlier okay they kind of started here started here started here right. as time went on they meld differently here they meld differently here it's all basically you boil it down the exact same thing mm -hmm. and if this is what you believe and this is what makes your heart warm and you're not mean or nasty to anybody else knock yourself out right i think if the world was like that in general we would have 99 percent of the issues today yeah. if everybody just took everybody for who they are and what they believe. Well, it's like Santa Claus, okay? St. Nick, Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. The version you have now was created by the Coke company back in 19, I think it was 1902. The Because originally Santa was not fat, okay? Right. Well, not based on what you described before, no, where no, he was tall. And, no, and by the they way, tried, they tried Jamie to... puts in there, we need Krampus, not Santa. We were talking about that earlier. We're, we were, we'll we're get there next, we're Jamie. We're going to discuss <laughs> Krampus. How much time we got? Yes, <laughs> we're going to discuss Krampus. And she does say also, her past fate has laid. So that's what yes. you guys were. Anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, you you're, you're, Krampus, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, but we can have two conversations going on at once with that guy. But oh if God. you look at the origins, when they started doing St. Nicholas and so on, there is a story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the story was a cover-up, honestly. Um, it said that St. Nick was so good mm -hmm. that God had no place to put in him any evil. Okay. But man is born with original sin, mm -hmm. according to Christian belief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he put it in his shadow. Okay. And from his shadow raised up 
Krampus. Okay. Now, if you go into Norway or Sweden or Germany, Germany, they're going to laugh at you because Krampus has been around for centuries. And there are several different types of Krampus. Um, they joke and call them Krampi, uh, but uh, I don't. There's wanna, for that, John. I, just in case you I were don't, wondering. I don't want to butcher the word for it. I think it's called Pertinen or okay. Persianen. Okay. Um, it's a an old word, and they are actually demonic angels. Okay. They are sent to Earth to drive out the evil spirits and send them back to the underworld. Mm -hmm. Okay. Notice they said underworld and not hell. <clears throat> so the white demons that you see in these parades that they, when they have the Krampus parades, the white ones are the good guys. The other ones are the bad guys. They are supposed to represent evil in the world, darkness in the world again, bringing back the light mm -hmm. and the white ones are driving them. That's where they get now you're talking old traditions, the, the switches that they carry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how they would drive their horses and, and their animals. Mm -hmm. So the switches and the bells, the bell has a specific reason. Bells drive away dark spirits. The louder the bell, the farther it will run. Hmm. They don't. That's why church churches have very bells. Large bells, very large bells, loud bells on a Sunday morning at 7 a.m. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so here are some of the origins of these things. And if you look at some of the origins, if you if you guys knew the origin of Ring Around the Rosie, a lot of you would be. Why am I saying this to my child? Because it's about the plague or um, Rockabye Baby. And the reason I'm saying that is because it has to do with this time of year. The Bairds, now known as Bards, people who went from town to town and brought news, would make sing songs so they would remember information. Rock a bye baby on the treetop. If a woman had a baby during the month of December, the Catholic Church looked down on it and would not baptize the child until they did this. Rockabye baby on the treetop, when the wind blows, you'd swaddle your child, put them in a cradle and put them on the highest bough of the tree at night. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bough breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come baby cradle and all. If the child survived the night, what are the chances? <laughs> the child could be baptized and therefore was not an evil spirit not the dark soul coming to the earth, mm. not Satan's child, because it was born in the month of December. Mm. And this was not the pagan way. No. Who, it, so this was from who? This is say? a Christian. Christian belief. This was an old Christian medieval belief because they felt that any child born in December was the Antichrist. Gotcha. So women would abstain. Gotcha. They so would try to abstain right. so they would not bring right. bring a child into this world during the month of December. Right. But no things happen before March. Right. So, you know, they would try to cycle their births with like May, June, so that they had the summer so the child could actually grow and flourish. Mm -hmm. But the church got in there and they were like, nope, th this kid could be the Antichrist. So they would sacrifice their child. Right. John, keep those messages up on the screen so the ladies can see them. Because Jamie is is putting some you know some comments in there. First, she says, when we talked about the bells, yeah. she puts in there, bells made of iron also tied to the old fae legends. Yes, fairy yes. beliefs, yes. Right. Okay. Fairies um, and iron do not go well. Yes. Uh, Catholics are dark. Um, beliefs in their beliefs are, have some darkness to them. You mentioned <laughs> darkness before. But maybe that's just her okay. belief about Catholics. I, I'm dark. not saying that Christianity is dark. It does have a dark history. That Yeah, I think that's it kind of what It does have a about. dark history. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So it's kind of fun because I've known Jamie a long time and, and hearing her input along with your story and, and sharing the information. For me, I'm sitting in the, in, in the middle and I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> so she clarifies, she means the stories like you yeah. were just talking now, about. And people go, oh, well, pagans did this and that. And the pagans killed Christians. All right, let me... Let I'm so me, fascinated by all of this. 
let me clarify that. It wasn't pagans who did it. It was Nero. Nero put Christians into the um, arenas because he was the one who burned Rome and he blamed it on the Christians. He was using them as scapegoats. Being a Jew, you understand that mm -hmm. because they were Jews, right. not Christians. They believed in the Christ, but they were Jewish. So they took the Jewish people and anybody who backed them or, and that, and that includes Romans who were protecting them. And, mm -hmm. and look at the time period. And right. look at the time period. And they, they sacrificed them in an arena in a, um, well, it, just look at Spanish Inquisition and Tocamata. 90% of the people he killed were either old women they claimed were witches or Jews. Why? Because the church could take over their lands, their property, their monies. Boom. Hello. We talk about dark history. These are all dark history, but it is history. And don't forget the Crusades. Uh, we will. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a whole nother show. Join us next week. <laughs> yeah. Join us next year. <laughs> next year. Yeah, right. next year right? uh, midwives. You mentioned midwives. Uh, yes. In, uh, well, yeah, they were targeted after some point as well. Right. Yes. They were delivering then it the... was the men doing that job. Gotcha. Because the women were witches. Gotcha. All right. Before we go to our break, I want to just share a couple of the other things that are going on here in town. Uh, I'm almost afraid to share them after all of this information, <laughs> but uh, how about we go to this? First of all, when we come back, I want to talk about your January event. So yes, okay. John, do you have that flyer for that that I sent you, I hope? No. John, it was in the promo that I tagged you in, John. Gosh, oh, you gotta, John. You got to do this all by yourself. Sometime. You'll find anyway, it. Anyway, later today or I'm after. I'm in hell for that. Actually. <laughs> we don't believe in hell, so you're good. I don't either. Actually. <laughs> Oh, I, I told you, there's a restraining order. <laughs> and, uh, some cities, if you go to the other side of the track. But anyway, uh, here's some events going on right now, uh, going on as we speak right now, Downtown Christmas Expo at the, in the Plaza's third floor convention. Uh, Ethel M's Holiday Cactus Garden, which we talked about, is going on now. Through magical the end. Forest. Mag oh, the Magical Forest. Opportunity Village. Opportunity I, Village. That's our baby. That's matter of fact, our baby. I got that right there. See, it's right yep. on my list. Uh, when I was in Kiwanis, we used to volunteer at that time. Man, staying at the railroad tracks was cold, but it was a lot of fun watching everybody go by. Yep. That's uh, a magical forest at Opportunity Village. You can go online, uh, check their times pretty much from, uh, let's see, uh, December 25th, 3 o'clock uh, to 4 a.m. Uh, every other day of the week, you're looking at about 5.30 to 9 or 5.30 to 11, depending upon the day of the week. And then Enchant, which we talked about, was the Las Vegas ballpark. And again, Ethel M's Holiday Cactus Garden. Do not forget about that. Here's the best thing about stuff like that. There's so many great things to do that you don't have to be on the strip to enjoy them in terms of being able to do things as a family if you so choose to. I will touch on some New Year's stuff when we come back from the other side of the break. So you're watching Aaron's Hour. I feel fully cleansed and listening to the information that's here today. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back with more right after this. Hello, everybody. It's me, President Trump, greatest president in the history of presidents. And I've been on a lot of shows, a lot of shows. Believe me, but the best one by far is Aaron's Hour with Aaron Phillips. This guy is so amazing. What a great interviewer. And you can catch him every Saturday from 12 to 1. 12 to 1. It's a tremendous show. You know why? I was on it. And the ratings went through the roof. Check it out on WWDB TV. That's WWDB TV. It's huge. Valley Gallery. I've got a habit. So colorful. I can't live without it. You'll find the art that speaks to your heart at Desert Valley Gallery. Most business owners struggle with the following issue. How do I brand my business to get noticed? Double Eight Design Studio helps businesses by designing brands that boost confidence, look and feel timeless, stand out from the competition, and attract all the right clients. 
Whether you are in need of a new brand, upgraded design elements, or completely redesign your current brand, Double Eight Design Studio has fully customized packages for your business. Call Chelsea McKendrick at 702-525-3334 and visit www.88designstudio.com. Let Double Eight Design Studio give you a brand new outlook for your business. Hi, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> You know what the greatest skill is when you're in the middle of a conversation and your commercial break is about to end, you make a smooth transition as if nothing ever happened. Hi. Anyway, <laughs> right, exactly. I had the weird sisters here with me talking about the holiday traditions. And I also have my dear friend, Jamie, back east, who also uh, Wiccan and just listening and being in the middle of all the information. Is for Jamie me. needs to come out here this January. Yes, Jamie, come out. Please explain why. Come out, come out, wherever you are. It's, it's a whole, n- don't get started on another tradition, please. Talk about why. What's happening in January? In January, we are co-hosting an event called Witch Vegas. It's at the Orleans, January 20th and 21st. And we are proud to announce Oberon Zell is going to be speaking and signing his books. And Hallie Elise is coming from Florida. She's going to be doing readings and she will be speaking um these are just some of the names that we will be having we will have readers we will have vendors will you have an mc we're not sure yet we may and we're working on it <laughs> we're working Sorry on, on it, it. <laughs> hoping. i'll even wear my my jackets and hats <laughs> but um we are doing a witch contest best dressed witch oh best witch hat best witch broom that's and, my favorite. And we're coming with, and it's coming with prizes. There will be raffles. Both uh, Saturday and Sunday. Anybody who is a VIP gets a special gift at the door and gets to come in early and gets to go to the meet and greet on I'm- Sunday, Sunday morning. But we are having a witchy rave Saturday, oh. Saturday night. night. And it is in celebration of the dark feminine. So, Ooh. yeah, I think so. John dated her. Did you date her? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh. So just um, FYI, if you're looking, it's on Eventbrite. Um, is it? Yeah, Eventbrite. Eventbrite. <laughs> to get search- your tickets and your information on yeah, Eventbrite. Yeah, on, right. on, on Eventbrite. They search what on Eventbrite? Uh, which Witch Vegas. Vegas. Okay. Yeah. And if you look at um, our little uh, Witch Vegas logo, it has information, or you can go to the Witch Vegas site that's on Facebook. And uh, we have all our information there. So I'm, I'm just, I'm chuckling my own head because you're talking about witch, witch. I have a whole Abbott and Costello routine going through my head. Which, about which is which? Witch. Yeah, like, right, right, exactly. How many Sandwich witches does it take to put on a corset? That's, <laughs> <laughs> you saw how many witches it took to put on a corset. <laughs> that's right. Man, I thought the wall was going to come down watching them with the corset on uh, earlier because you need the stability, so I get it. Yes. So you made an interesting comment, though, about why there's bedposts on beds. Yes. They had to hold them. Yep. To get tied in. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, bedposts. Until my wife finds that out later. Bedposts were put because uh, most beds had covers. And had curtains right. to keep the body heat in. Because, okay. Because that, that, that's how it came yeah, about. Yeah. Oh, okay. But like old put, movies, the royal bedroom, you're seeing you all, the, all the curtains yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, to keep right. the body heat in because, you know, you, their rooms were so big. Right. And right. I, we spoke about the servants getting yes. up at two in the morning, making the fires. Right. You, you have to realize the servants had it tough. They were running around the house sure. at two in the morning. If it's, you know, snowing outside, they're making all the fires. They had to right. cut the wood. They had to do all that. They didn't exactly have a power company back then. No, they didn't. <laughs> manual power. Manual power is, manual what, they power is <laughs> what they had. So, um, but that gives you an idea. But the curtains were also to keep, you know, keep the heat, the, the body heat in, in. So, and then they started making them heavy posts so women can hang on to them. So <laughs> they tied in their so corsets. When, when they did la toilette, um, the, the servants could put them in the corsets and corsets have changed. Originally they were whale boned. So very fragile, yeah, very sharp. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Whale bones uh, to keep the body shape. And it would depend on the era as to what the corsets sure. looked like. Um, it was uh, Empress Josephine 
who said that corsets were an abomination and uh, Napoleon abolished them. Really? Yes. Okay. And it was, that's why there's a dress called the Josephine because she designed it and she designed it with a um, under garment that is a soft corset. Okay. So that, so that the bot, so that the so structure, the, the structure yeah. stayed, stayed up. Stayed. Now you mentioned something earlier when we were, we, we were kind of laughing about it, but you said corset, there's men corsets as well. Yes. Originally there were men's corsets. Okay. Um, of course. Um, the, the See French, the French created, <laughs> so cute. the French created corsets. Right. Um, they created it for men originally so that men had svelte figures and looked really good in their garments. Right. And, then they started getting elaborate and then all of a sudden it took a shift in um, costuming, you mm -hmm. know, clothing and men stopped wearing corsets, but they wore other things like, right. um, I forget what like they, girdle, like uh, a, a girdle, like belt, right. okay. you know? So these were the different dress attire sure. at the like time. Like a cummerbund. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Kind of like oh, a that, cummerbund. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That like a cummerbund. From. Okay. Um, but it was also accoutrements to keep the other clothing intact right? because belts were worn on the outside and right. they, they were for your pouch and so on. Okay. And when men started carrying pockets, they didn't need those anymore. Right. Okay. So it, it, and you know, these things that like they, we said things change, traditions change. Right. Um, but it's been an upsurge. Sure. There is a men's corset company that came out. And the men's corsets are absolutely stunning. I wonder if they have, <laughs> if they have a 48 long. Um, so yes. And there's different styles and they're absolutely, they're beautiful. You know? J J we talked, we, John and I chuckled when you were getting tied into court about sneezing. Yeah. So yes. Jamie you puts can't. in there, she says, risk your life to sneeze. That's what you wrote in there. About. Well, Jamie, do you do court, the corset thing? Because I've never, never, well, not that I would know, but I'm just curious. Generally, corsets in, in our costuming is on the outside. <laughs> yes. Jamie I'm not like wearing my... two of them. No, no, it's good enough. no, but but you talked about beforehand yeah. when you get dressed, no, originally, how many different layers no, yes. how do you normally prepare for? I mean, what was it, about six layers of clothes? Like early, depends, 18, early depends, 1800s. It right. depends on the era. Well, it really depends true. on the era. And okay, it also remember all those fabrics were heavy. Yes. Yeah. Wool. Yeah. Everything was Wool, heavy. Wool, brocade, um, uh, and, you know, silk would be on the outside, but there would be 12 layers underneath right. it. Exactly. The, one, the worst were the French because the things they came up with, and they stopped wearing um, the bustles because of opera. Okay. Because a woman wearing a bustle took up two seats. So they came up with opera gowns and they that got was streamlined and that was streamlined and long and elaborate, but they could pull up the train. Ladies, that's where the wedding gown came from. Wow. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking about when, when you, as soon as you mentioned train, I'm like, yeah, that's where minute. the wedding gown came from with the holding up of your train or a train that can detach. Right. So, now they have that as fashionable in, in the wedding gown industry yes. now, especially yes. for dancing yes. afterwards and all that right? stuff. You can, and you can keep the train and you can actually turn the train into another garment, which a lot of women do. Does Hey, John? Yeah. Does the train go to Clarksville? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, if, you're waiting at the station. if you're waiting at the station. <laughs> Listen, He's normally I, monkeys. You, normally you'd have to pay for jokes like that. I'm paying for it because of the booze I get later. Yeah, paying the same. <laughs> well... I can make money then. That's for right. sure. Um, all right. Before we move on, I want—I do want to ask about New Year's in a second, but I want to share some things going on for New Year's. Of course, one of the traditions here in Vegas is uh, fireworks, like, you know, yeah. the ball drops in New York and everybody at the fireworks and all that stuff. Well, as tradition would have it, uh, there are, let's see how many this year, about almost 10 casinos that fire off their fireworks off the top. Always hoping windy conditions don't kick up to cancel and cause potential damage, but... Uh, the Aria Resort and Casino, Caesars Palace, MGM, Planet Hollywood, Resorts World, the newest one here in town, of course, the Strat Hotel, Treasure Island, and the Venetia. Those are the current hotels that are scheduled yes. to fire off fireworks. I would I'd like to say Please. something really quick on the yep. fireworks. I'm a pet owner. There is a lot of pet owners. Yes. Fourth and of veterans. July. And, and veterans. And veterans. And from, veterans. Yeah. Yeah, I married a crayon eating Marine. We're good. Oh, my God. <laughs> John, um, she knew you? Yeah. <laughs> um, some people forget until it's right. like last minute. Um, 
You can get this in any natural shop. It's called Rescue Remedy. It is a natural Bach flower, humans and pets. If your pet really doesn't handle those loud noises, get a hold of your vet at least two weeks early and test out the medication they want to help calm your pet down because everybody's blowing them off. Yeah. And, it, and it, they hear it so much louder than we do. And yet, so like, please take care of your pets. And they don't understand holidays. what's going on. Right. You just hear the loud sound. Right. Yeah. And if somebody has PTSD. Oh, and it, yeah. And it's not All just veterans. It's not just veterans. There are some people that have PTSD from other things, accidents and so on. And loud noises make them panic. And oh my God. You know, I'm telling you, 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 you talked about doing my reading last time. Mm -hmm. About 11 weeks ago at the school I work out, there was a hard lockdown because right across the street there was a shooting. Yes. And I'm the only one on my school campus that saw it happen. Everybody else was in their rooms and everything. And I was in shock because I'd never gone through a hard lockdown before. And two days later, my wife and I went out to dinner with some folks and we went to an out, outdoor ice cream parlor so you could sit outside. Truck drives up into the drive through has a backfire. Like from where I'm standing to where you are would be yeah. the truck. My wife looked at me and she saw I immediately turned as white as this piece of paper. I stood still. And my wife looked, it's okay. It was just a bad one. Everybody had a good laugh at, you know, at that yeah. point. But you don't know how you're going to react to it until that yeah. happens. And quite frankly, I mean, I'm not, we don't go to the strip. I did the strip for New Year's once when I first moved out yeah. here and I did yeah. it one time and that was it. So I'm going to be far the way, but uh, you know, hearing fireworks and stuff, this go around after the incident that, that I witnessed, be interesting to see how I even respond to it because I usually I fire I love M eighties and the fireworks and all that, but now going through that, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. um, like uh, Whole Foods or whatever, it's called Bach Flower. Okay. You can get it in drops. Okay, it, humans and animals can take it. B a c h. It. That's how it's spelled. Bach, Bach like yes. the yeah. composer. And it's yes. yellow packaging. Okay, just um, put a couple of drops under your tongue, okay. and that's a natural calmer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm okay with my cats using that. My gotcha. dog is 60 pounds. You know, she's German Shepherd, Australian Shepherd, just a little bit of wolf. I have to use the vet gotcha. to knock her down. Gotcha. Yeah, she panics. Okay, okay. She this panics. big dog is trying to get in a space this big. <laughs> to hide. Yeah. To hide, sure. to hide. underneath sure. my yeah. underneath sure. my dresser. I have we have about two minutes left at max, so I want to wrap up with this. One of the things I love that the city does for New Year's is a relieve drivers of the responsibility of having to worry about driving. That is parking. wonderful. All for uh, that. So here's two things. We've partnered, uh, this, we, as in the city, with, uh, with zero fatalities and other local partners to offer a discounted ride from Lyft. Use code NYES, New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Eve Safe Ride. So NYE Safe Ride 22 to receive $5 off your, your ride. Uh, discount valid from 6 p.m. Thursday the 30th through 6 a.m. Monday the 2nd. So they've covered it all weekend. And then, of course, the regional transportation system has done this for forever, where they offer rides, uh, offering free rides on all fixed routes from 6 p.m. New Year's Eve to 9 a.m. New Year's Day. So even if you're going to go in and around the Strip, the RTC is there to support. So there's no reason anybody who drinks has to get behind behind the wheel yeah. to, to go home. So I love that about don't the drink, city. And, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. That's why pers personally... I don't usually go out, although my dear friend Rafi has to grab a plane to go visit his his family in Texas, his kids, and he has a flight out on January first. You got to get me in my living room because that's where I'm starting. That's where I'm ending. I, I, I normally I wouldn't go to the hall crawl, and I'm and I'm there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything real quickly for with New Year celebrations that ties into any origin stories or is just well, we our, just our, new, our new our New Year's past. So did so did mine. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> right. so this is just another reason for people to get together and watch fireworks, drink, and eat. Well, I think um, celebrating once, life and each other is always yeah, a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I think also that once they they established um, um, a traditional calendar and everything, they just made an excuse. Sure. <laughs> as good as any. Just hey, just day. a quick programming note, just a reminder, Aaron Zauer. Thoughts can anywhere and will be dark the next two weeks. Although Kiwanis Connects will be on the air each of the next two Fridays as well. Continued programming. From bringing nine, in the light. Bringing in the light. Next, uh, this upcoming Thursday, the roundtable will be the last show for 2023 before we take that following Thursday off between the holidays. Bottom line is the light will be brought in in full in 2024 and all shows 
are back on the air. Ladies, thank you as always. It's been great to chat with you. Yes. I, I've actually learned an awful lot today hearing about some of the origins. <laughs> I would love to do something on or continue to do something on a regular basis with holidays information. Candle mass is coming. I, that's February 2nd. <laughs> what, what is that? What is that? Candle pertain? mass. Is uh, what? Uh, Real quickly. Um, Too late. It, yeah. <laughs> all right so you know what we like, call that a cliffhanger it's, yeah it's a, we'll come back in february about it's that like, one. uh how am i going to describe this <laughs> well, so we, and we'll tell you later there we'll you go you that's what we call a tease we'll have it okay. back for that all right ladies again thank you very much thank you time. appreciate it uh hopefully we'll i'll see you at least in january for the event maybe if things work out i may yes. come anyway regardless all right jamie um <laughs> please come down to vegas yes Come on, you have a good time. It's witchvegas at gmail.com. Or you can look us up on Facebook. Eventbrite. 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 Okay. Check it out. If you're, Vegas. And if you forget all of that, rewatch the show or just message me on my Facebook uh, and we'll get the information back to you. And anyway. It's W I T C H. Yes, not, <laughs> not witch witch, but witch. Uh, anyway. Everybody out there, have a great holiday. Whatever traditions you follow, yes. make them yours and enjoy family around. Blessed you all. Blessed you all. As always, be kind to everybody. Why? We're all we have. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next year. Happy New Year. On Aaron's Hour. Thank you for watching.